Welcome back to the channel. I'm back at it again with the Supercharged Grand Cherokee. Today, I'm going to be installing the Innovate Wideband. So, so far, I've been having to guess because I can't get the data logger to work with HP tuners. So, I've kind of been looking at the, the map voltage and uh, the long-term, short-term stuff. But that only works in vacuum because you, you don't want to be trying to lean it out under boost. So everywhere else, I've just been absolutely guessing on how it feels, which is kind of dangerous with a boosted vehicle. But it's only five pounds of boost, so it's really not that crazy. But I ordered the uh, ordered the Y band Sunday, and it's Monday. It's supposed to be here Wednesday, but I ordered it through Summit. They're not very far away, and a lot of times I'll get stuff early. So it showed up Monday morning. I ordered it Sunday, so awesome. But we're gonna get to it. This is everything you get with it. This plugs into that and adapts it to their box. You can replace these with just a regular Bosch unit because it is just a regular Bosch unit. Let's see if I get the... Very simple wiring, very simple install. I like that they send this. I mean, most, most of them do. But I like how tall it is and how thick it is because I have seen where O2 sensors get too hot. And I've also read a lot about locations and where they should be. And a lot of them, it'll be sticking way in the pipe. But with theirs, it's just barely in there. Barely into the pipe. And you know, reading on forums and people's experiences with them, that's better. So, I like that. It's just, it kind of sucks welding them in because you're putting that on a round pipe. And the cheaper ones that are shallow usually have a shoulder on it that kind of sits inside the pipe. Makes it easier to weld, but we'll make it happen. Before I do that, I'm not really going to record me doing it. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to quit putting off getting rid of these adapters. I'm just going to do that now before I put the wideband in, so it'll be done with. If you haven't seen my other video, the problem with running these adapters is this one right here. By the time I stack that up, it's into this bracket. You could get the right size and right connector injectors, but I already had these 47 pound an hour injectors out of a GT500, so it didn't cost me anything. But I'm going to get to swapping some plugs. All done. Swapped them all. No more rigged up connectors. So now I'm going to throw the white band in. Alright, this is the plan. Here's the converter, the sensor here, the other one's way up there. I'm going to put it right here. Because I can get to it 12 fairly easily. Now, I wouldn't say it's the best spot. It's probably alright. But I'm not leaving this in the vehicle. I'm going to tune with this. And then this is getting plugged. In case I ever want to put it back in the tune it again. I've got a... I ordered this one. With just this box. Because I've already got the gauge in my truck. And I've got it set up to plug into a, a cigarette lighter. So I can take it from vehicle to vehicle. And just plug it in and and use it like that because I don't I don't have any need to have it in there all the time uh, I like to just set it and forget it until I make a change or something weirds happening if it's running funny but honestly if you've tuned it and it ran good and so it starts running funny there's a problem it's not a tune issue so there's no real need for a wideband you just gotta find the problem These are reamers. I use them at work. They are freaking awesome. But not cheap. I could do some whole saw, but I want to kind of try to keep it as tight as possible. Because having to take this, I only have two hands. I got to hold the filler rod and the tag and work the trigger and all that stuff. So if it's flopping around, it's a real pain in the butt. So if I can get it where it's tight and it'll hold itself, that'd be good.
It's not perfect. I welded it at this angle for a reason, so it'd still clear the body really good. Have plenty of room. It's not staying in there forever. But also, I didn't want too close to the ground to hit anything either. And it's a real pain in the butt to weld like this. I'm okay at it, and this this, is, this looks pretty decent considering the situation and my skill level. But I wanted to leave it where I could get to the top easier. So I didn't have a big build up and get ugly. But that'll work. Back playing with the supercharged Grand Cherokee again. Today we're going to do some test drives. I've got it, the air fuel's a lot closer. It's still lean under full boost, but not as bad as it was. So, but I've got some help today, so I'm going to try to do some drive bys and maybe a burnout if it survives. Um, on top of that, I think it is having a transmission issue. It did before, before the, the blower. It shudder a little bit on takeoff. But as soon as you're going, it grabs fine. It doesn't slip. It doesn't do anything else. So, after this, I'm going to get it good and hot and uh, try to clean up the pan because it is just gacked with mud. You can't even see the bolts. And then I'm going to drop the pan and kind of go over adjusting the bands and checking everything and raising line pressure and just see where it's at. I'm going to see if I can't hook a gauge into it to see what line pressure is at currently. Because like I said, as soon as you're rolling, it's, it's fit. It's fine grabs takes off and it doesn't even feel like it slips it just shutters I, I know a shutter is just on the way to a slip but either way we'll see if I can't patch it it's just a woods toy I, I leave it in first and leave it in second I've been leaving it in four low so I, when four low there's really not that much load on it but anyway we're going down the road people are, are going to be confused at let's go beat on it and it might be slipping or having an issue but I want to see what it was going to do it holds up fine everywhere it's only on takeoff and, and there's so many weird valve body things it could be anything broke spring broke anything but it has 300 thousand miles on it so I want to see if I can see what line pressure is and I think it's supposed to be like 60 to 65 or something in drive while idling so I want to see if it is or if the 300 something thousand miles it has on it has worn out the valve body enough that line pressure is just down because once you're in it it's fine it didn't slip before I started doing a burnout it didn't slip when I was on it it just shutters taken off so I'm gonna do some things I read online check some stuff and you'll kinda just go along with me and follow along we'll see if we can make it better if not you'll know what not to do this is about as clean as I can get it with just a garden hose and some degreaser. I've already got some bolts backing out. That's why it's already leaking pretty good. Um, I don't have the gauge that I thought I did to test the pressure as it is. So I'm just going to open it up. And uh, for people that are saying you need to check the TV cable, I've already done that. I've got it the most I can adjust it, as tight as I can get it. And it's weird is that you don't feel like you're moving anything. So it's another reason I want to drop this and make sure it's not broke inside. Alright, this bad boy right here, from what I can find, is supposed to be an inch and five sixteenths away from the case where the spring is. One six hundred. I'm gonna check it several times, but if it's supposed to be one and five sixteenths, and it is at one six hundred, then that's probably why it does weird stuff. 
So hopefully we found the problem and this will fix it. But I got to do some more digging because I think I've read a couple different numbers, but I've seen one and five sixteenths more than the other numbers. It wasn't quite. It was like one five hundred, but still, it's not inch and five sixteenths. And I've looked it up again. So I've made this short wrench. It's a three sixteenths, and counterclockwise should shove this in. So I'm going to get it to inch and five sixteenths, which is supposed to be standard. And then I may go a pinch further. Now I am curious because it's this spring loaded and it has threads. I wouldn't think it would ever move or be able to. But I wonder if in 300,000 miles it's been able to slowly eventually push this down the threads. I doubt it. But maybe. Alright, I've moved it in a good bit. This blue mark is our inch and five sixteenths. And... Well, there we are. I'm going to go in a hair more, just because hopefully I'm not messing up. And then we're going to move on to adjusting these. Where are you? Yeah, there it is. It's, it's right there. The band adjustments. And then we're going to put all this back together. New filter, new fluid, or ATF uh, plus four or whatever. And see what that does. See if that fixed our problem. All I've done is loosen this nut so that we can count these turns in. It's supposed to be two or two out after you torque at the 72 inch pounds. I'm not going to torque at the 72 inch pounds. Any mechanic knows about what that feels like. It's not much. All right. Let's see. How to do this and even half. One half two. It uh, feels like it's unless this nut's getting tight. It's not. It's a uh, that was pretty decent. Like that was right. So we're going back out. Half one. Half, two, oh, these things have either been adjusted or this isn't the first time this transmission has been worked on. The fluid didn't smell that bad. I'm going to set the phone down so I can hold the, so I can hold this from spinning. I got lucky and I found a uh, fire, I don't know what size, I think it's 5 16 square drive socket. But I'm not going to be able to, to hold the phone up here to record this while I do it. So I'm just going to set this down. I'll tell you that the numbers I've counted. And then I'm going to set it back to 2 and 7 eighths. I lost track counting how many turns it was to go in. But I believe it was a little more than it's supposed to be. So I just went in and then I turned it out 2 and 7 eighths. Like the information I have says to. So that's set. The pressure's set. This is set. I got to throw my new filter in. Clean up the pan because it's it's pretty nasty. And uh, I guess really can't tell on the filter. Hopefully this did something. We're gonna find out. It's all back together. Fluid checked. Now I go for a drive and see if it worked. Good news is it's better. It doesn't shudder in first. It still does it a little in second under a decent amount of load so I'm just gonna drive it as is not worry about it uh, I can pin it in first and it doesn't shudder and it can you can sit here and it's that easy doing a burnout doesn't shudder so eventually I will have to rebuild it it does have 300 something thousand miles so it's just par for the course so what happens when you buy cheap stuff but it'd be all right. It'd be another another lesson to learn and teach myself and watch some more videos on rebuilding transmissions. I put a valve body in a 46 RE in my Dakota, and that's the closest I've gotten to being inside a transmission. But it's all right for now. I'll worry about it when it gets worse, if it gets worse. I'm sure it will. Well, that's it for this video.
Hopefully it'll last long enough I can go play in the woods and make some other different videos. I I really wanted to get into lift kits and wheels and tires and stuff, but if I put bigger tires in this, it's probably not going to last. So I'll do other mods. I still got to make an intake for the blower. Still got to do some, maybe maybe some stuff on tuning, get it a little more fine tuned. If it's running good enough, it's running pretty good. I can go rent a dyno. I've got my 240. I want a dyno. I've got this thing. I've got the supercharged Dakota. It, it costs like $300 a day to rent the dyno. So I'm really going to wait until I have enough time to get everything over there so I can spend the whole day dynoing cars and hopefully get them all dialed in. But that's it for this video. So please like and subscribe and thank you for watching.